can't believe this is happening. Oh, I got a good grip. I got to, uh, I got to tell people. That's what I got to do. I got to, I got to go tell people. I got to, I got to share the news. I got to let them know that, uh, Who's going to listen to me, huh? Who's going to listen to me? I mean, I, it's not like I have any kind of reputation. People don't give me two looks. And I'm going to be the one. I'm going to be the one to talk about angels sighting and messiahs coming. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, I just got to... I just gotta put my manners on, that's it. I put my manners on, I gotta talk right. That's it. And I gotta I gotta clean up. I can do that. I can clean out under my fingernails. There's no hiding this man. Maybe that's it. He said, uh, good news. Good news of great joy for everyone. Because the Savior was born today in Bethlehem. He said we'd recognize him by by a very specific sign. He said that baby would be wrapped in cloths and lying in a... <laughs> and this was the kicker. <laughs> that baby would be lying in a manger. <laughs> and Messiah in a feeding trough. <laughs> oh. I mean, even my family was better off than that. We didn't have two sticks to run together, but at least I had a, a bed to lay my head in when I was a kid. I've been waiting my whole life for this Messiah. And now it seems he may be more like me than I ever thought possible. That angel got it wrong. This ain't good news. This is the best news ever. In the same region there were shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had said. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying God and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them." The angel got it wrong. This isn't good news. It's the best news ever. 
Do you feel that way? I mean, when we hear the Christmas story, and we've all heard it a thousand million times, but, but, but as we hear it anew every time, is the good news good news to us? Is it great news? Or is it just a story we tell because it's that time of year? Maybe the holidays aren't your thing. Maybe Christmas is a difficult time for you and not a time of great joy. Maybe you're just a Scrooge. It happens. But the birth of Jesus Christ is good news. It's, it's great news. It's the best news ever. But how often do we let that be the best news ever? What makes the good news good? I mean, we are all the time talking about the good news, and for us in the church, that's kind of our, our catchphrase. We, we share the good news. We, we preach or proclaim the good news. We, we tell the good news to those who need to hear it. But what makes the good news good? Do we know? I thought about it this week a whole lot, and, and to me it seems like the, the angels' words to the shepherds give us a hint as to why the good news is such a good thing. He says it's going to be great joy for all people. Emmanuel, God with us at Christmas, becomes one of us. Not just with, but just like us. That, that He was born, and I, I used to say it so I could get out of, of decorating and, and all of that stuff, that, that, uh, that Jesus wasn't born in a Hallmark store. He was born in a barn. All these lights, all this decoration, do we really have to put all this mess up? Because you know we've got to take it down. But, but, but His birth was so obscure. Born to, to lowly parents. How anything good comes out of Nazareth, we'll never know. But, but, but they were born on the road, in a barn behind the inn. Not a bed, not, not a hospital, not a doctor's office, not, not, not any place nice. Born and all that were there to welcome Him to the world. It's a mom and a dad and a bunch of stinky animals. How insignificant an event this really is. And then the angels proclaim this birth not to the king, not to royalty, not to anybody that mattered, not to anybody important, to shepherds. And I don't think it was an accident. I like what the guy said in the video, and I hadn't caught it, and I've watched it a, a, a thousand times, but, but he said, maybe, maybe this Messiah is a whole lot more like me than I ever thought. Wouldn't that be great? I was reading from Philippians chapter 2, and it talks about Jesus becoming one of us. Paul says, "...have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But He emptied Himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross." Therefore God has highly exalted Him and bestowed on Him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Paul says He emptied Himself of everything that was God to be born just like us. Hebrews says that He was like us in, in every way in order that He could redeem us in every way. Though our lives are obscure and insignificant in the grand scheme of things, Jesus came and entered into them. And that's good news, isn't it? It better be. Great joy for all people. All people, not just the ones like us, 
Not just the ones that we like, but for all people. And in Jesus' day, I got to, to looking things up. When He said good news was for all people, that included the Gentiles, not just the Jews. And if, if you follow this out, this becomes really good news. Uh, the best news to me. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk, according to the, not, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And until Jesus came along, and this is why this is such good news. I kind of shared it with the kids. But until Jesus came along, if you wanted to be in right standing with God, you had to get it right every time. All the time. I looked it up there. 613 commandments in the Torah alone that Jews were responsible for getting right. I'm thinking about my behavior. And I'm thinking about my tendency. And I'm thinking about my nature. And I'm, I don't get it right more than I do. Amen? I get it wrong more often than I should. More often than not, I get it wrong. And now Jesus comes on the scene and He says, we don't have to perform anymore. Doesn't matter how wrong we get it, His grace is big enough to overcome. And to me, that's the best news ever. When you're a chronic, not getting it right sort of guy, this is what you want to hear. Jesus Christ came to be one of us, but also to be the grace of God to us. And that's the best news we're going to hear. The good news is the good news. Thirdly, because we get a Savior. Jesus came to do what we couldn't do for ourselves. He dealt with our sin once and for all. Yesterday I was cleaning the house. wasn't going to share this. But, but I think this is kind of what I do spiritually too. I didn't necessarily clean stuff. I hid stuff. <laughs> and, and there's a big difference according to the lady I live with. With our sin, that's what we're prone to do, to hide it. Jesus doesn't want it hidden. He wants it dealt with and put away. Isaiah tells us that all of our righteous, righteous deeds are like filthy rags before the Lord. He goes on to say that, that our best efforts at handling our sin is filth. We just hide it. But... Though our sins are as scarlet, He will wash them white as snow. The birth of Jesus, God with us, is now God one of us. The birth of Jesus, not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles too. And that means the law is put away. Because of the birth of Jesus, the good news is good news because we have a Savior. And that's the best news of all. I promised the kids I'd try to keep it short, and they've been, they've been great. This Christmas season, my hope and my prayer for each of us is that we comprehend just how great the good news really is. And that with this awareness, we find hope and joy and peace. So that as we are being changed, we're also being changers to the world in which we live. Is the good news good news to you? Doesn't matter about the rest of Christmas. The birth of Jesus is good news. Good news of great joy for all people. Heavenly Father, this morning as we prepare to, uh, to celebrate the birth of the Christ child, some of us are going away, some of us are having a house full, some of us might wind up alone. Lord, 
help us know that regardless of our circumstances, the birth of Jesus changes everything. And that's such great news. It's fun to get caught up in all of the stuff of Christmas, but Lord, uh, take our breath away this year as the good news is great news to us. Thank You, Father, for Your gifts of Christ and the grace and salvation that comes through Him. We ask these things in His name, in His name alone. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning, a